I'm joined in the studio by Oxford economist Linda Yu. Thank you so much for coming to speak to us. So this could potentially be the end of the road for Google in China. I mean, what could this mean for the company, given that we are talking about the world's largest internet market? It wouldn't bode very well for them to retain their place as the world's biggest search engine, to not have a presence in the largest and fastest growing internet market in the world. There's another nearly billion Chinese who can come online. But I think Google was always in a tough situation. They try to get around mm. the censorship by redirecting traffic to their unfiltered Hong Kong site. Now, why they thought the Chinese authority wouldn't cotton on to this, I'm not entirely sure. But I think they have to seriously rethink their engagement with China. And to be frank, they need this license. They need to keep their presence in China. Just having software, Android, is not going to be enough to make up for their main business, which is the search engine. And they have to keep a foothold in the Chinese market. So Google needs China more than the other way around? I think very much so. Google at its peak had only about 30% of the search business. So the Chinese search engines, like Baidu, were much more popular anyways in China. So mm. chi I think China has a lot of technology, a lot of ways of surfing the internet without Google. But for Google to keep its growth momentum, it's very hard to see how it can do so if it's outside of China. And nevertheless, could we see companies like Google then have to sort of innovate their way around China's censorship policies uh, as Google did by redirecting Chinese users to its Hong Kong site. I mean, obviously that didn't work, but I mean, are we more likely to see companies try and, and do things like that rather than, than, than uh, the Chinese government showing more flexibility with their sort of censorship and regulation policies? I think they've got to meet in the middle. I think in one sense, this dispute with Google was centered around the fact that there were Chinese hackers, they alleged, which tapped into their proprietary accounts obtaining illegal information. Mm. This is very threatening, of course. This is Google's core business, their algorithms. And I think the Chinese authorities at the time said this is against the law. We want technology companies to be in China. They just have to find a middle ground between the Chinese regime, which is very sensitive to political protests, but very open, actually, to commerce and to technology. And I don't think they have found the right balance, but it makes Google a very good test case for this kind of development in the Chinese market. Now, moving on to China's broader economy, we saw European stocks falling yesterday, partly on concern that China's economy is expanding at a slower pace than estimated. Why might this be the case? Oh, the Chinese authority have actually worked now for months to try and put a break on the economy mm. because there was a real danger of overheating. First quarter growth was nearly 12 percent, and that's very high even for China. So in, in one way, markets really shouldn't fall because it just shows the Chinese authorities' efforts are actually working. They want to make sure that the credit growth and liquidity expansion associated with their stimulus in trying mm. to boost the economy to make up for the fall in exports doesn't generate an asset bubble. So yes, markets are a little bit disappointed because some of the figures on commercial floor space looked a little bit down. But I would say that's actually within expectations. We want China to not grow at 12 percent, which is probably too fast, but to come down much closer to about 10 percent, which is a realistic growth rate. Yes, exactly, because in the last few months, certainly in the first part of the year, we were talking so much about, uh, you know, the, the risks of an overheating economy in China. And, and as you say, it seems that uh, measures that the government is taking to rein in that uh, breakneck growth uh, and is now working. Citigroup has said that China's exports face strong headwinds in the second half uh, and loan growth may slow by the end of 2010. What do you make of of that assessment. I think that's right. And I think that's something the Chinese authorities have actually worked towards. They know that global demand is weak, exports will be down. That knocks about three percentage points off of their growth rate. So they do have to make up for that with domestic demand. So it will be a tough environment. But at the same time, they can't make up that domestic demand just by unleashing credit. So they're still on target to meet a credit expansion rate of about a trillion dollars this year. It's a lot of credit. Um, however, they just have to rein back the Excessiveness, anything that might go into unproductive uses to forestall bad debts building up in their banking system. So if they can keep to the credit target and boost domestic demand, they probably will still achieve their 8% growth rate this year. That's certainly what they're on course to do. And I think the slowdown is actually good news for markets. Well, we'll certainly be discussing these issues some more uh, during the course of the next couple of hours. Linda Yu, thank you so much for your time.